What's up guys, Logan Davidson here bringing you a video tutorial on how I edit all of my pictures that you see on my Instagram and also kind of giving you the backstory behind each image and kind of my thought process when I'm capturing the image. So let's jump right into it and kind of see how I edit these images. Um, so for this image, this shot was taken in the High Uintas, Salt Lake City, Utah, or just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. And we went on a backpacking trip for about a week and I think we were, we did about 23 miles round trip, somewhere around there. And it was an awesome, awesome hike. We, uh, basically there's a ton of different lakes that are within this forest. And this was the one that we actually ended up camping at, I think for the entire week. But let's, uh, let me show you kind of where my thought process, thought process is with uh, composing the image. Um, so basically this is what it looks like during the day. So you can kind of see it line up a little bit there with the horizon. Um, but my, my, main, uh, my main goal with this photograph was I was trying to get a photo um, that the where the Milky Way would line up with the campsite. Um, and as you can see here, you can see our campsites right in here. You can see our tents there. Um, and basically I was just kind of scoping out this side of the lake trying to see kind of what it would look like. And a great tool to use while you're out shooting um, is this little app that's called Sky Guide. I've had lots of people um, recommend this app to me. I, I personally love it. It's a great app to see where the Milky Way is going to be at um, during certain times of the day um, and kind of uh, it'll help you kind of figure out where you need to be um, to get the certain shot you're looking for. Um, so for me, I went on the other side of this lake here and kind of was looking at my app and trying to see, you know, where the Milky Way was going to line up. Um, and luckily for us, it actually was lining up pretty well with our campsite. Um, I think I adjusted a little bit and hiked a little bit farther over to make sure it was lined up. But for the most part, it looked really good. So I took this snapshot as kind of a reference photo to kind of brainstorm different ideas um, and hopefully get some cool shots later that night. Um, so as the night came along, um, I hiked over to the other side and uh, basically I, I had the guys over at our campsite throwing some wood on our fire to make sure the light was bright enough to capture. Um, and I took a few shots at first and I, I couldn't see um, exactly what I was looking for. And basically I just boosted my ISO up. You can see here I shot at 5,000 ISO. Um, and with that, it really brought out the Milky Way clouds that you're seeing in this image, uh, which I was really stoked on. I was really excited to see that because I hadn't um, seen that in any of my images before. Um, so this one was shot at a 20 second long exposure right over here. Um, which for me, I've found that anywhere around 20 seconds to even 15 seconds is when uh, you'll get the most pinpoint stars. Because um, even on in this image, you can even see some kind of star trails happening. Um, uh, but that's what I think for me, I, I usually try to stick to around 20 seconds. Um, this, this was shot on my 5D Mark III um, and also on a 24 to 105 F4. Um, so I definitely could be shooting with a lens that has a lower aperture to help really bring in some extra low light. Um, but I, I would say for this image, it did a, it did a great job. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump right into the editing process behind this image um, and kind of what my, um, kind of my thought, process, or thought process was on it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll reset the image. Um, and you can kind of see how you can still see the clouds pretty well in the raw image. Um, it just looks pretty dark still. Uh, so what we're going to do first off is I'm going to play around with the exposure level. Usually I'll play around with this just to see kind of where I'm at with my, my noise levels and kind of the overall dynamic range of the image. As you can see here, you can see the magenta kind of noise that's going on here, uh, which we definitely want to kind of try to stay away from. Um, so I'll bring this back down. I'll probably bring it to, um, let's see, we'll probably go to about 50... 55 looks pretty good. We'll keep it on that. Um, and then from there, you can play with your contrast and kind of make the, you know, the sky's gonna pop a little bit more, which is nice. Usually I'll play around with the darks to make that pop. So we'll just leave this at zero. Um, and I don't play around with too much in this section here. Um, I think usually I'll do the, only the whites. Um, Cause that's gonna really bring out your sky and it's gonna help with the exposure. So I'll boost this one up. It's go to, let's see, we don't wanna to do too much. We'll probably go around 60, that should be fine. Looks pretty good. 
Um, so overall, you know, we're looking already pretty good. I think uh, with just the exposure, bringing up that sky, it really helps, makes the image pop. Um, so from there, I don't really play too much with the clarity on this section or the vibrance or saturation. Usually keep that, keep that pretty, pretty normal. Um, the next section that I jump into is the tone curves. Um, tone curves are a great way to add some style to your photos. Um, lots of people will use this to um, add that like fade look to your shadows. Uh, I think it's really good with portraits, um, it adds a really cool effect. Um, but I don't really use it too much with night photos. I think with night photos you're, you're playing around with your shadows and your lights so much I think it's good to keep it really um, really poppy is what I like. So I'll keep it where it's at there and I'll start playing around with these this section in here. Um, I'll jump into probably the highlights. We'll see, this is gonna bring out the clouds inside your Milky Way. Um, I think for that, I'll probably just go around 15. Um, yeah, 15 should be good. You can see it right there, kind of pops that out. And then also with the lights, um, I'll boost that up to help bring up the uh, or the exposure as well. Um, so that will probably do around 30. Let's see. 30 looks pretty bright. I'm gonna go down to we'll do 26. That should be fine. Uh, so 26. So we'll you can see here uh, before and after, um, and it's starting to look really good. I, I'm starting to really like kind of where it's at. Um, next, I'm gonna jump into the just the uh, horizon line. It looks already pretty good. Um, I probably just adjusted a tiny bit. Um, honestly, you probably can't see much of a difference, but um, that looks pretty good there. Um, next, I'm gonna jump into the gradient filters. Um, these are an awesome way to edit certain sections of the image. You can use the circle or just the uh, horizontal gradient filter. Um, we'll do the sky first. We're gonna play around with the colors and the kind of the shadows of the uh, clouds of the Milky Way. Um, so first off, I'm going to start with the colors. Um, I think it looks pretty, pretty yellow and pretty green, uh, which for me personally, I like to bring uh, the sky to look a little bit more blue. Um, just something that looks a little bit more natural to your your naked eye with the sky. Um, obviously, at night it's going to be pretty dark, but blues is, blues are going to give it that cool um, out outdoors look, I guess, that kind of outside look. Um, so we'll bring it down. Um, I think the Blues will leave, I'm just go to negative six there. Cause we don't want to overkill. If we go too far, it's going to look fake. Um, so I'll just keep it about there. Magenta, bringing up the magenta usually helps too. It kind of helps even out the colors on there. Um, so for that, we'll just go probably nine. That's probably fine. Um, same thing on here. You can play with the exposure. I think for that, the exposure is looking pretty good. We'll leave it there. That should be good. Um, and this where I would probably play with the clarity and the haze. Um, Clarity is going to work with all your highlights and it's going to leave majority of your shadows alone for the most part. Um, but you, same thing, you don't want to go overkill on this. So I, I boost that up. You can see already, you can see in the, the shadows in here that really makes the, um, gives some depth to the, the actual clouds. Obviously we don't want to boost it that far because it really hurts the image. Um, so I'll go probably around 20, maybe 30. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go 17, that's good. And then for the dehaze, um, oh, I mean, sorry, the, uh, so let's see, clarity, go with that as well. Yeah, cool. So we'll, uh, we'll do nine there. So dehaze 17, clarity nine, not a whole lot. Clarity is where it's gonna hurt the most if you're boosting it up. It's gonna really affect a lot of the image. So that's the one you're not gonna wanna play with too much, at least on some of the star images that I've done. Um, so keep that probably pretty minimal and then dehaze you can play around with dehaze a little bit more It's gonna not affect it too bad, but I think it's gonna just give a little bit more depth to your image um, So that looks good. I think uh, the colors look good in the sky now next We're gonna work on or we're gonna focus on the reflection in the water here um, So same thing bring in the filter drag it up. So it's gonna be focusing on this section and then with that I'll probably um, Try to match the sky a little bit more. So bring in the blues um, you don't want to do too much, uh, so we'll probably go around 20 on this guy, a little bit less, we'll do, yeah, 11 should be fine. And then uh, as for the color on the greens and magentas, um, you know, if we push in the magentas, it's going to look a little bit too blue for what I, I'm looking at. 
So I'll probably go towards the green a little bit more, which is gonna match the sky a little bit, a little bit more than the magenta would. Uh, so that looks good. Um, next, you could even play with the exposure again, but with that, it's gonna bring out all this green inside the shadows. Um, so a really good tip um, that I've figured out is to just play with the clarity on this one. Um, same thing, you don't wanna crank it too hard, but this is gonna focus on all the highlights and it's gonna leave your shadows alone for the most part. Um, so for the clarity, I'll probably boost it up to about probably 20. Um, yeah, 19 is probably fine. Uh, but you can see the, the difference there already. Um, we can even play with the whites. That could even bring out the highlights a little bit more. Which I think we'll do. I think we'll probably just go we'll keep it at 30 about. Uh, but you, as you can already see, you can kind of see the trees are starting to have that green. So we probably don't want to push it any more than that. Um, next, I'm going to probably focus on um, making it so that your eye focuses on the Milky Way and the campsite. So I'm going to kind of give it a, a vignette look to it where basically I'll bring in a another one of those filters on the side. And I'm going to probably play with the dehaze. That's going to bring in the just the darker sides there. Um, I'll probably just put that up halfway and that'll look good. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. You kind of have to play it by ear, but usually a little goes a long way with that. Um, but so yeah, that looks that looks really good. I think uh, this is kind of the before and after we can kind of see here. So that's before, and there's after. Um, a few things, maybe I think I would probably play around with the, I think we're gonna darken this lower half again. Actually, let's see who's gonna go, that guy there. Probably bring on the whites. So we don't wanna look, make it look too, too crazy. Um, Perfect. Yeah, I think uh, I think that'll probably do it for this image. Uh, so there's the before after. It's definitely I would say one of my favorite images that I've taken. But definitely give some uh, feedback in the comment section, and also any questions or comments that you uh, you might want to have be answered. I'll definitely uh, check those out. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's just Logan Davidson. And you can always send me direct messages there too. Um, I love reading your guys' messages and. Um, interacting with you so definitely do that the next video I'll probably do a adventure kind of lifestyle image something that's probably warmer tones I'd probably do maybe some like desert photos I'm not really sure yet but keep an eye out for that make sure you subscribe so you can uh, see when those pop up and I also want to open it up to you guys which images would you guys like me to edit um, if you have any in mind screenshot them send them over in my direct messages or um, anything you can send me an email as well but yeah, keeping out for that. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys stopping by to check this out, and I will see you guys on the next one. Darling.